I recently painted a piece of furniture for a client that was inspired by a piece from the Sundance catalog. Now I've been asked to do another piece in sort of a similar fashion. We really didn't discuss too many details, so I found this piece in the Sundance catalog because she has a real love of Southwest decor. When I showed her the picture, she said, yes, but not as much turquoise and not as blotchy. Then I saw another piece on Pinterest that was a little more refined. I have my work cut out for me to make this French provincial secretary look a little more southwest. So of course I have to remove the hardware and I take off all of those little escutcheon plates that are um, supposed to be little keyhole things. They're really easy to remove. Just put the screwdriver in and just kind of angle it a little bit and they are just nailed in and they usually lift up and the nails pop right out. I take off all of the hardware. I'm going to be replacing them with cup pulls. And of course we start every project with a good cleaning. I put it up on wheels and then I got out a whole lot of different browns uh, in the chalk mineral paint line and some weeping willow and also some temptress uh, in the voodoo gel stain line. They're all water-based and they'll all work together. I'm going to use a water mister and one brush. I start at the bottom and kind of follow in the one picture for inspiration. Their legs were gold. Um, I'm just using pine cone is the color that I'm using. And I just want to make the legs kind of solid. But Currently, they have a cherry stain on them, and I want to get rid of that and make it look like a little bit darker wood. I work my way up. And I kind of follow that dark color up into uh, in the corners and up the sides of the piece. Then I start in with my next shade, which I believe is Mud Puddle. And just kind of work my way in.
I used the Weeping Willow color instead of the predominant turquoise, just because our other piece featured the Weeping Willow color and our furniture has that color in it. And the next color I move into is one of my new favorites called Cobblestone. Using the same brush throughout, I'm just kind of dabbing and blending the wet colors together as I go. I'm working pretty quickly all over the piece. Here's where I add a little bit of the Voodoo Gel Stain in Temptress to the piece. Again, I'm still using the same brush and my uh, bottle, the squeezer, was a little bit uh, clogged. So I just squeezed some out and I'm just using the brush to apply it. That is the technical term, by the way, the squeezer. At this point, I'm not really sure how I feel about the piece. I decide to use a large round brush. It's the best dang brush from Dixie Bell and water Mr. Bottle and just kind of uh, add a little more paint and try to reactivate the paint a little bit and just kind of blend it together a little bit more. So that's how I'm leaving it for the night. And then I come in the next day and I start again. So I'm gonna try something different. I usually never talk while I'm painting and we'll probably find out why. Um, it's quiet right now except for that loud buzz you hear back here but I can't control that um, but this is how I came in today and found the piece you know this is where we left off and I wasn't really sure about it <laughs> I like the way it looks getting a paper towel here but there's some things I don't like about it I want to see a little more brown mainly because it's a client piece and she um, I had showed her a picture we really didn't talk about what we wanted to do with it so I had showed her a picture and I'll put it in my um, I'll put it in the video here so I showed her the picture and she said a little less splotchy a little less turquoise so this I know is not turquoise but kind of decided to put more of this Weeping Willow color in because it's prevalent in another piece that I did for her and also like in her furniture those tones are in there more so kind of wanted to make it coordinate a little more with the rest of her furniture but I definitely want to put some turquoise in there because she has a southwest vibe going on in her house so I know there's a little bit of brush strokes in there. I don't think I want to wipe it back. I kind of like that. And just a little more misting. And I think, oh, there's a brush hair in there. Anyway, I'm going to do a little dabbing. 
because all I really wanted there was a little more brown. And I kind of really like that. I just don't want it to be linear. Okay, I'll worry about that brush hair later. So, I like that. Um, I'll come back in with probably a knife, uh, you know, a palette knife, and put a little turquoise in. Um, so anyway, the reason why I'm talking while I'm doing this is so I don't lose um, my, my feelings, what I want to tell you about. So, you know, what we're doing here, you know, is, is art. It's work and it's art. But, um, you know, to, in order to create, you have to, I don't know, it has to come from somewhere. You have to feel it. And, you know, you don't always feel just super creative. Sometimes you feel like a block. And sometimes you have emotions, or in my case, so so sickness, you know, just haven't been feeling good. My husband was sick, and then I got sick, you know, the cold, the cough, feeling run down, all that stuff. So there was that, lack of energy, little um, NyQuil fog, <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, so... And the, and the hustle and bustle of retail, like sometimes I have to come back here, like now, and watch the camera and make sure there's nobody out there because then I have to put the paintbrush down and go right out, you know. So, I mean, it's just like not uh, uninterrupted creativity happening. Plus, my, my cousin died. Um, it's kind of an important part of my whole life. And I can't be there, and that's sad to me. So I just wanted to share my feelings right now, because I know sometimes, you know, everybody looks at things and they either imagine what they're doing or they wonder, or they don't think about the feelings behind what you do. and. Um, just wanted to share it with you and you know that's something I think I'd like to do more in the in the coming year because feelings are important as we all know <laughs> so yeah if you contrast that top drawer to to the next one down it's taken away all of that like spongy look you know PC and I like that so I really hope my client loves this because I'm liking it a lot now. I went from really not liking it. So that's part of the feelings too. You, you know, on top of it, you're, you're not liking what you're doing and that's really not good. You know, that doesn't make it easy to be creative. I'm a solutions oriented person, no matter what it is we are talking about. So I try to solve problems. And even with creativity, like, that's a problem if you can't kind of get creative or feel, feel the project that you're working on. Okay, I have a little, like, strokiness here. I actually like it. Um, so I'm going to kind of stay with that. I'm watching my camera. I definitely want to work on the sides, uh, too. But I, I'm, I'm very happy with this because I'm also going to come in and do some stamping. Um, so I really hope she likes it because I really, like I said, we didn't discuss it a whole lot. So I think she just says, do your magic. And <laughs> that always makes me feel good. And I just hope that she likes it. We're also going to be doing a... So I painted another piece of furniture in her home. And... Um, she had envisioned it being a little lighter than it turned out. And actually, I did too. So I'm going to come back in because it was just like a kind of a faux wood treatment. And um, so I did like, I'm just going to dry brush some more color in. I used silk, so it's the paint with the sealer in it. Um, it's okay. I think we'll be able to just add on to it and it'll be fine. I'm, I'm really liking this. I went from not to, to liking it. <laughs> the legs, 
didn't I didn't get full coverage on those. I had let some of the original wood kind of come through and I kind of I think I might stick with that. I'll come back to them. I might end up doing something else. Might add a little patina kind of look down there or something maybe. I don't know. So I'm not even sure whether I'll leave all this in the video. I might edit some of my rambling out. But you know what? I think it's nice. I feel like you're here with me. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it. I think what I'm going to do is just do a little down on the bottom just a little second layer here. Okay, I like the front a lot. Okay, I have to pay attention to my video. I had some customers come in and then one on the phone. Kind of ruined my mojo, mojo here a little bit. I'm going to need another paper towel. kind of dry brushing. No, I shouldn't say dry brushing because I'm definitely going to make it more wet. But you're seeing the strokes in there. Matter of fact, I'm going to keep it wet. Because I really like that ethereal quality in there, but I just don't want the splotchiness. Sometimes just spraying it um, manipulates the, the color with chalk paint. Like even before you do anything else to it. And you can do a drippy look if you want, but I don't want drips. I'm glad I didn't reach out to my client like desperately saying I don't know what to do do you like this because I just wanted to kind of keep going <laughs> we'll find out if that works for me or not but usually it does but you know sometimes people say I love everything you do well they do until you do it in, in a way that they don't like and they're paying for it so <laughs> Here I'm using one of the elements in the Bohemia stamp, an ink in turmeric. It's a very subtle kind of tone-on-tone -tone effect, but I think it really works on this. So I'm back to talk a little bit more just to say that 
to me, painting is therapeutic because I wasn't feeling good about this piece at all. When I came in today, I was feeling very deflated and now I feel really good about it. <laughs> so that's just something I wanted to add. And now I'm adding just a little bit of that turquoise with a palette knife. It's just kind of like a little smeared thing. Just add a little bit more of that color in there. Because she didn't want a lot of turquoise, but I feel like turquoise is just so southwest, right? As is red, I'm so tempted to put some red in here, but I don't want to go like way off of her color scheme, but I think a little bit like this might not be bad. I really like what this is doing. Kind of like going along those detail places and just getting a little bit. Very accidental on purpose. So I just want to share with you just the whole roller coaster of emotions that you can have while painting one piece of furniture. Okay, you can color me relieved because I had a video consult with my client and she loves it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really grateful that she does. So I'm just using some clear wax and I'm just going to use my rag and apply it. I just feel like this finish needs um, good a good coat of wax. And I'm not gonna use easy peasy I was tempted because sometimes it's just quick and easy, but I just feel like these colors need to be blended together a little bit with the help of wax. And I also want to apply some dark wax too. Um, so this is my next step. I also need to touch up a little bit of paint inside, like where you open this up and the tops of the drawers and stuff. But right now, I'm just going to work on the finishing stuff. Again, I know you all know, if you know me, that I do things a lot of times backwards. But it doesn't hurt a thing <laughs> in my world. Okay, I have a coat of clear wax all over the front, and now I'm going to take some brown wax and the La Petite brush and do some detail waxing. And the nice thing about doing this over the clear wax is if I don't like an area, like right there, 
I can basically just come back in and erase it. So I'm just, because I don't like this area over here. But I'm going to do the edges here. I mean, the whole thing is kind of moody. Um, got some clear wax I'm just going to get rid of over here because I, I didn't wax that yet. Um, but I'm just going to rub, rub the wax in, kind of circular motion. So it's just kind of nice and soft. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell or not with the lighting, but I think it makes a big difference. It makes it a lot more um, dramatic, I think. So I'm going to keep dark waxing the drawers especially because um, those areas, there's so much detail to, to get because you want to get around the handles. Whoops, <laughs> I dropped a hunk of wax. Which is fine. I do that all the time. Okay, I'm going to get in here and around the frame of all the drawers and that little detail that's in between the drawers. I can kind of do a broad stroke and get all of that at once in there. And then just do around the handles. I haven't really rubbed that in, but do you see a big difference between these two? Like I said, maybe it doesn't really show up that much, but I think like especially around the handles, I think it's a notable difference, and it's just another layer that adds to the depth and the drama of a piece like this. I think a lot of people are afraid of finishes like this. Just don't be. <laughs> so where my store is inside of Atlas Furniture Imports, we have a lot of pieces that are from the Indus Furniture Company, and that's from India. And they're made of upcycled um, materials and the paint jobs on them are very similar to this kind of effect. They look like they've used, you know, palette knives and everything to, to apply paint. You can use blocks of wood to apply paint and get interesting looks. It's all kinds of ways. I'm going to keep waxing and we'll see what it looks like soon. Let's take a look at where we started and what it looks like now. Let me know in the comments whether you think we did Southwest right.
want to thank you so much for watching and I appreciate all those minutes and hours that you've spent on my channel. I pour a lot of love into my work and in making videos and I appreciate you watching. And also today for listening. As always, I ask if you like this content that you share it with your friends, give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost anything. And that way, if you hit the notifications bell, you won't miss anything. We offer channel membership for only 99 cents a month. And that's going to get real exciting in the coming year. So stick around for details. You can find us on social media at Statement Designs and on the web at StatementDesigns.org. Hope you all have a blessed holiday season and stay well.